Mahatma Gandhi had said, my uniform experience has convinced me that there is no other God other than truth. Today, I am going to share with you my experience of being part of a movement for truth. A movement which has been pretty successful till now, but still has a long way to go to achieve what it really intended to achieve. This is the movement for declassification of files of Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose, the man who had called Mahatma Gandhi the father of the nation for the first time, which he went on to accept, the entire country went on to accept. But what is truly ironic is that while he called Mahatma Gandhi father of our nation, the truth about the life of that person who first called Mahatma Gandhi father of the nation is still in the dark. Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose is supposed to have died in an air crash on 18th August 1945. That's what the official version goes. But then, Justice Mukherjee Commission appointed by the first India government, they observed in the report in mid, in 2005 around. They said that there's no evidence of a plane crash, no record of a plane crash at Tahuku airport on 18th August 1945. Well, another plane which crashed in the same airport the few days after that, that record is there. Not only that, you know, the death certificate for Netaji. Netaji, when he died, there must have been a death certificate. That death certificate was not issued in the name of Shubhas Chandogos. It was issued in the name of a person called Ichoro Okura. And who was Ichoro Okura? He was a Japanese soldier who had committed suicide. So going by this theory, Shubhas Chandogos actually was a Japanese soldier who committed suicide. That's the official version. Isn't it amazing? But that's not the end of the story. We started a movement for declassification of Netaji files, which were with government, to reveal what author Anuzdhar calls India's biggest cover up. The movement ended up with a long march for Netaji at Jantar Mantar in Delhi on 18th August, the day he had disappeared, 70 years after his disappearance. And one month after that, on 18th of September 2015, West Bengal government decided to declassify the files of Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose. A few days after that, on 14th of October 2015, Prime Minister called us at his residence. And Prime Minister observed, when he requested him to declassify the files, he said, of course I'll declassify the files. And he said, a country which forgets a history cannot create history. And he said, not only am I going to disclassify all the files of Shubhas Chandra Bose, but also I'm going to request other countries like Soviet Russia, like Japan, like UK, to declassify the files which are there with them. But then, we come back to that basic question. Did Netaji die in an air crash on August 18th, 1945? Now, there have been evidences of, you know, to actually suggest that, well, he died, but these evidences have been circumstantial evidences. Because there are many historians who think that when there's no real evidence, we should look at circumstantial evidence to arrive at the truth. So what are the circumstantial evidences? Let me give you an example. Colonel Habibur Rahman, he was co-passenger with Shubhas Chandra Bose in his last flight, which is supposed to have crashed. And Colonel Habibur Rahman, he came to Calcutta to meet Shubhas Chandra Bose's elder brother, Sharod Chandra Bose. And when Sharod Bush asked him about the tragedy which happened to his younger brother, Habibur Rahman said, you know, Netaji came out of the flight. His uniform had caught fire. I tried to save him by putting a blanket around him. But he had suffered such huge degree of burn that I couldn't save him. Sharod Bush observed that if you try to save a person whose uniform has caught fire, there will be burn marks on your hand. But there's no mark in the hand of Habibur Rahman. Habibur Rahman could not answer. 
Think of another incident, 1941. Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bosch had escaped from the house just opposite to this college. Netaji Vabon. He escaped from the surveillance of the British Empire. He has escaped to Afghanistan, from there to Soviet Russia, to Germany, from there to Southeast Asia. A man who could escape from the British Empire, is it too difficult for him to actually escape, to actually escape from after the war by creating an air cash, which never happened? And is it too much to expect that the people who are loyal to Netaji, like Habibur Rahman, to help him escape, they will follow his instruction and see what he wants him to say. And it is not for nothing, Honorable Chief Minister of West Bengal, she says after the day of declassification that Netaji might have been alive after 1945. In fact, that's not a saying. The files declassified by the central government also shows that government itself did not believe Netaji Jayadi in a clash. In fact, there has been surveillance on Shubhash Chandra Bose's family till 1968. Netaji is supposed to die in 1945. Till 68, the government is having surveillance on his family. If he had died, what is the need for surveillance? Not only that, recent files, declassification has been happening every month, you know, 25 files are coming out. Recent files which has come out, they showed that government suspected that Netaji was somewhere in North Bengal in early 60s, 1961 to be precise. We have seen photographs of Lal Bahadur Shastri the day before he died with a photograph of a person beside him who is, who, who is a look-alike of Netaji because there is a concrete evidence he is Netaji. But all this points to one fact that the government of India never believed Netaji passed away in 1945. In spite of the fact, our first Prime Minister gave a statement in mid-50s in the parliament, in response to query from the opposition, that of course he died in an air crash. Let us come back to the present age, mid-90s. Asiatic Society of Calcutta had an understanding, had an agreement with Soviet Russia. Russia, to be precise, Soviet Russia was no longer there. And Indian cultural mission from Asiatic Society visited Moscow. And under Dr. Purobi Roy, Netaji researcher, there was an effort to find out facts about Shubhash Chandra Bose. And you know what happened next. The External Affairs Minister of India called up General Secretary of Asiatic Society, late Dr. Chandan Rai Chaudhuri, and said, stop this research, otherwise there will be international crisis if this facts are out. Can you imagine, my friends, a person has died in 1945, and if the facts are out, there will be international crisis. After Right to Information Act was passed, in mid uh, 2006, I think, we have repeatedly requested government of India to declassify the files, let the people know the facts. You know what the response has been? Till 2014, the response has been, if these files come out, there will be law and order problem across India, particularly in Bengal. Till now, 200 files have been declassified by center and 64 files by the uh, state government. Relating to the files, I don't, I haven't heard of a law and order problem. Today in the newspaper, I heard about a law and order problem in Meerut, but I don't think that has got anything to do with declassified files. So if Netaji had not died, or if the air crash never happened, so the question of death doesn't come, what happened to him? The most popular theory, again, there needs to be evidence, there needs to be declassification of KGB files, but the most popular theory passed on to Russia, Soviet Russia, through Manchuria in China. Why Russia? Because Soviet bloc was opposed ideologically to the American and English and French bloc. And because of that, he thought there will be asylum in Russia. But what happened to Netaji after he went to Russia? In fact, the evidence is Netaji's wife, Emily Schenkle, she believed in 1995 that Netaji was in Russia. But what happened to him in Russia? There are two theories on that. The first theory says that Netaji was imprisoned in Russia. Why he was imprisoned? He was declared a war criminal. You know, friends, few, few, uh, this month only some files were declassified. Last month, in fact, some files were declassified in which we have got to know that Netaji was never a war criminal. In response to a query from government of India, UN has categorically stated Netaji was never a war criminal. If he is not a war criminal, the question of keeping him in prison doesn't arise. Then what happened to him? Again, the question comes back. 
a very interesting observation from the files declassified in Bengal shows that British police suspected that he was in China. In fact, Shorot Chandra Bosch, Netaji's elder brother, who I mentioned earlier in my speech, he suspected in 1949 and said, Netaji is in red China. In fact, there's a saying he has said someone to China who personally met, who is supposed to have personally met him. Again, there's no evidence. Also, there's a saying in 1952, there was a meeting in Cambodia and four people participated in that meeting. Who are these four people? Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, Ho Chi Minh, and guess the fourth one, Shubhas Chandra Bose. Again, for this facts, it has to be fact-based. I'm putting the theories before you. For this facts to be out, there has to be declassification of the files which are there with Chinese government, which files which are there with Soviet government. But what happened to him after he went to China? What happened to him after he went to China? There's a third theory. This theory states that he actually came back to India. And he lived in India at Ayodhya by the name of Gumnami Baba. You know, UP government has been asked by Allahabad High Court to actually declassify the positions of Gumnami Baba a few days back, a few months back, and actually create a museum for Gumnami Baba. He was a very unknown person. Why was there a request from UP government to create actually a museum? And you know, out of the positions of Gumnami Baba, what came out was that many of his positions were actually positions of Shubhas Chandra Bose. They are family photos. They have other belongings which Netaji used to use, which is very surprising. In fact, not only that, there has been speculation that during Bangladesh war, Netaji is supposed to be in India and supposed to be working with the government of India in terms of fighting the war. In fact, declassified files have showed that in mid-60s and early 70s, many critical files related to Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose were destroyed and destroyed by whom? Government of India. If we actually put together all these facts, surveillance till 1968, Till mid 60s and early 70s, files getting destroyed, then possibility of a person, he could be Gumrami Baba, he could be someone else emerging, staying in India. That points somewhere. But again, these are assumptions. To arrive at the truth, if it is a fight for truth, to arrive at the truth, we have we need facts. But the story of disappearance of Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose could be much more than just a disappearance. We keep hearing about financial scams these days, isn't it? This could be India's first financial scam. You know, I and the Indian National Army, the Azadin government, they had accumulated huge amount of treasures. And these treasures were accumulated to voluntary donations of Indians in Southeast Asia. There was Azadin Bank with these treasures. Netadi had paid back the debt to Japanese government, partially to Germany who had supported him when he was there in Berlin. But these treasures went missing after he disappeared. But where did the treasures go? There was a loot of the treasures, as for the files. It is ignored by the government of India. And not only that, people who are supposed to be involved in the loot, there was no inquiry, I can't say this person was actually looted the treasure, but people who were supposed to be involved in the loot were actually awarded by government of India. So is it another attempt to hide what is possibly India's first financial scam? Or possibly the biggest financial scam if we take the value of, you know, rupee in real terms? The movement for declassification of Netaji files has many shades. But I firmly believe, as being a soldier, being part of the movement, that declassification is just the beginning. The beginning to create a world with transparency of governance. You know, it's not about just declassification. It's not just about Netaji. It is about democracy. 
What is democracy? Democracy is government by the people, for the people, of the people. If it is government by the people, for the people, of the people, we as people of democracy, we citizens of a democratic state, we don't have the right to know the facts, the truth about functioning of a government. It's not just about Netaji, it is about Lal Bahadur Shastri's mysterious death, it is about mysterious death of Shama Prashant Mukherjee in India, it is about several mysterious deaths and disappearances across the world, it is about what Edward Snowden is fighting for today. When he reveals certain facts about CIA, there were tremors almost in different intelligence headquarters. But it is about a question whether citizens of a democracy who are supposed to be shareholders in organizational terms in this country, they have right to know or not know about what our government, which is supposed to be our, our government, is doing. I believe that if these files are declassified, which I'm sure will happen, it might take some time, it might take some more struggle to actually, Soviet Russia particularly is very important in terms of opening up the KGB archive, but the truth will come out. Netaji had once said, that India's freedom is not is necessary not just for India, but for the world. Because once India is free, all the major colonies of the world would also become free, which it actually had happened. After the biggest colony of the British Empire had become free, most of the colonies had got freedom. Political freedom at least. Other forms of freedom, of course, are not there. Economic freedom, social freedom, of course, are not there. I firmly believe that if truth about Netaji comes out in the open, this will start a new world order where transparency of governance will be firmly established. And that's why I said in the beginning, it's a successful movement, but we have a long way to travel to achieve what we originally intended to achieve. Thank you, my friends, for the time.